Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Tim Peterson. I'm an assistant professor at Washington University School of Medicine, and I lead the longevity working group at uh, Beta Dow. Um, I'm joined by um, Morton Shebby Newson, who's an associate professor and group leader at the Center for Healthy Aging, University of Copenhagen in Denmark. And I just wanted to um, welcome everyone here today for the kind of official uh, on-chain uh, voting process for the Shabby Newson uh, Research Project. It's the first uh, project for Vita Dow. So we're really excited about this. It's been a, a long effort uh, by the Shabby Newson Lab and uh, University of Copenhagen to get this proposal up and running, you know, to get it uh, to get it vetted and everything. And then finally now today, uh, we're celebrating the the uh, um, the fact that it's now on chain and, and, um, and you can go and uh, uh, this call will be posted to YouTube. Um, the links to the proposal, everything is online, vitadao.com, as well as on, on YouTube. So you can go and vote and encourage you to do so. Um, and so just to, um, um, I'd like, just like take the opportunity today uh, to, to uh, introduce Morton a little bit. And so I guess, Morton, you maybe tell us about your background. Um, you know, um, we're very excited. You know, you're a, a leader in the aging field, but maybe just, just give a brief uh, introduction to yourself, please. Thank you so much, Tim, and uh, thank you for having me here. So um, my background, I'm a medical doctor originally from the University of Copenhagen, and I then spent uh, about a decade in the U.S. At, at the National Institute on Aging before I returned to Denmark to, to start my own group here. And my work has been focusing on understanding sort of the molecular basis of aging and with a particular focus on developing interventions for aging. And so, um, um, obviously, the most interesting interventions are the ones that might work in humans. And so, for that reason, we were very fortunate to be able to get a hold of sort of uh, a number of critical data sets uh, from, the, from Denmark, which is registered data on... Um, pharmacy records, uh, registered data on, on uh, death records, birth and death records, and registry data on uh, sort of healthcare data. And so in Denmark, we have extremely good registries. These go back, uh, actually, some of the registries, the birth and death registries goes, goes back several hundred years. Uh, but the... the um, so this pharmacy records go back to about the 70s, but that means that we can actually look at every drug that's been prescribed in Denmark to every person in the last 50 years. So this is a database of about more than a billion uh, transactions. And then we can correlate that with lifespan and with health. And so this is what we've been doing for the Vita Dow project, allowing us to identify some molecules that appear to be associated with a longer life in humans. Um, and there's been a lot of um, interest in this, particularly in the context of, for example, the metformin trial that is coming out of Neobasilis group, where they're looking at uh, repurposing metformin, which is a known drug that, that is used in, in type 2 diabetes, to see if they can treat globally morbidity. So repurposing drugs is a, is a potentially a very interesting avenue here. And so we worked... Uh, to get this through uh, the um, you know the legal frameworks here at the university for quite a while, uh, and were finally successful, um, uh, allowing us to. And this was actually late last year, allowing us to actually make an, a, a contract so that this particular type of project, which is funded externally. Uh, can be considered as a sort of contract research obligation, which means that everything that uh, we produce as part of this project, the IP actually belongs to the community. So this, I think, is a very exciting way to, to potentially do science. That's great. And so uh, with regards to this proposal specifically, so um, you've identified three combos, maybe there are a few others, but uh, kind of three that you're very interested in. And what's great about them is they already, we already know they're safe. So this is a big issue in drug development uh, where people can, can, you know, of course there's chemical space is kind of infinite, right? And people can, can come up with all kinds of molecules, you know, chemistry can be very creative, but you found three, which we already know are safe. And then the idea would be that, well, maybe we can make them, tweak them to be a little bit 
better, um, yes. you know, to, uh, yes. you know, exactly. and, you, know they are, you already know they're associated with longevity, but maybe we can even, you know, push them to make them even better. And that would, you yeah. know, be, uh, yeah. you know, obviously of obvious value to everyone yeah. around yeah. the world. I think one, one important point to make here is that they are, they not only are associated with longevity, but we also tested them, uh, in, um, to compare them with drugs that are given to the similar diagnoses. So these confer a significant lifespan benefit even to drugs in the same class. So this could suggest yep. either that they're off, that they're targeting something else and this is what is affecting the uh, longevity response or that they're more effective. But That's there's uh, likely then, um, I mean, there's definitely then room for optimization, right? And this could be an avenue of IP. This is something we're doing in related in another project, which we're running with a company called Silicon Medicine. Okay. Here we have done sort of um, modification of the compounds and so forth. All uh, right, so yeah, so as you can see, this is gonna lead to, you know, hopefully many directions, you know, um, with with, uh, with leaders in, in, in industry, like in silico medicine are, and, and then of course, university collaborations. And we'd like to be able to replicate this with additional universities and, and we're definitely in touch with several um, additional universities. Uh, do you have any, maybe, I know this, this project has really kind of already gotten started. You, you, you've been working on it for a while. Um, I didn't know if you had anything real briefly, just um, in terms of updates. We've had, of course, several discussions. Um, you've had several discussions with Vita Dow that have been public. They're on YouTube and, yeah. and Twitter, and we've done a lot of conversations. So we don't need to go into, you know, gory detail, but maybe just the yeah. kind of latest, you know, what's the latest as of the last, you know, couple of weeks or so. Um, yeah. I mean, we're still collecting the data for the fly and lifespan experiments. They have been conducted uh, so far. Um, uh, and so we're quite fortunate. We have part of my group, a guy called Michael Peter, from my group developed a, a so-called lifespan machine for Drosophila, which is a, a way to do high throughput lifespan analyses using, in one project we've used, I think 6,000 flies in a large number of conditions. So we can test a large number of conditions. And this is what we're doing with the, with the compounds. We're testing them at uh, three different concentrations, a log scale of 10, so 110 and 100 micromolar. Um, and um, then we're doing it in triplicates. And then we have, of course, corresponding vehicle controls and stuff like that. So we are uh, testing it quite broadly. Good. Um, yes. That's great. Yeah. So, I mean, um, this machine that you mentioned, you know, so if, if you're just not familiar in, in worms and model organisms such as, uh, such as fruit flies, Drosophila, right, they, they have the power because they're simpler, the genetics is simpler, um, but they're also more robust and particularly with machines like, like what Morton's describing, you know, doing thousands of flies at the same time, mm. you, can, you can achieve scale and, and robustness that you really just can't achieve, you know, um, in, in mice, which are a more, um, yeah. you know, they're also a, a, a commonly used um, yeah. species for and, uh, and, uh, activity. Yep. And of course, they're also shorter lived, right? So they're we don't have to wait three yeah. years for, exactly. for results. So this is a big advantage. Um, right. And then also, course, they, yeah. and also people, um, you know, people don't necessarily appreciate that, that most of the important results actually are conserved between these, you know, what some people would think is distinct species like flies and humans. But in fact, a lot of the genes are the same. And so, uh, particularly the most important genes that affect longevity. So, um, so very, you know, Morton's group is leveraging, you know, this kind of uh, rich history of using model organisms mm -hmm. of to, to really establish a solid foundation for this work. Yeah. And we yeah. also, so we're also, of course, then testing the drugs sort of in vitro in cell cultures in the lab. And we have developed also sort of screening tools that are very ideal for drug uh, screening. Um, there's a, we have a paper in review in bioarchive where we have developed a, um, an algorithm that can predict senescence based uh, solely on DAPI staining, which means that you can really, you know, go nuts with, uh, with testing compounds. Um, so, so I think, uh, I think we, we have actually, all the tools in place. We actually use that by the way. Um, okay. We'll, we'll talk later. Yeah. We've got a project where that could be very useful. So okay. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. We should definitely, 
I would be very happy to help. Yeah. So yeah. So I think this will. Um, yeah, you can see it'll be um, just creating a lot of opportunity for people to, to get together. So yeah. 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 So I think um, I think we have all the tools in place. We have some of the cell work already appears that there is maybe one of the compounds where there is an effect, but I, I w- I'm a little bit careful about that yet. So I think we should. Um, um, I mean, we got to push forward, right? Um, but of course, people are sort of working for free right now in this project. So, so yeah. this is why it's important that it gets funded. Yeah. Um, so, so I hope um, I hope that the Vita DAO will be positive towards this. Exactly. Yeah. So right now the voting looks good. I think there's about 12 days left um, if you go to the go to the site. Um, and so yeah, the voting so far is 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 very positive. Um, um, but definitely please please go and um, make your opinion uh, known. And yeah, I think the, the goal is to, you know, yeah, we've, you've done a lot of work and is to get, you know, get the funding to, to your group to, to continue on with these, um, you know, exciting molecules. So um, maybe one last comment on the science um, before I bring it back more generally is, is um, so th- you said, actually you said something interesting, which I had, hadn't known yet. So the, you said these, these drugs for various, you know, they're given for various conditions they're not given for you know to pr- promote longer life they're given for you know heart disease for example or, or something else so that also um, the fact that they also are better than their kind of counterparts for um they do heart disease but then they also do longevity would argue you know if you're just a cardiologist maybe you would want to consider these drugs over their competitors just because you know they have this kind of Sure. They not only help the, the specific disease that you have, but they would help, you know, potentially brought more broadly affect your lifespan. Yeah. So that's, I mean, did I understand yeah. that correctly? Yeah, this is uh, completely true. I mean, because uh, there is obviously a reason why you get a drug. So there could be a huge confounder in the diagnosis that you're getting. But because we see these are very strong effects compared to other um, drugs given for the same diagnosis. So, um, so for that reason, we're quite confident that um, that this is a true effect. Um, That's great. This is also actually, and that idea actually also comes a little bit from the metformin because there was a paper that showed that, uh, which was one of the first ones that showed the like, longevity effect of metformin in humans, that there, there are two, two, two different drugs you can use. One is metformin, the other one is sulfonylurea. Uh, and sulfonylurea was associated with a decreased lifespan, increased mortality rates, whereas metformin actually was, uh, even when you had diabetes and you were 70 years old, then that was associated with a uh, longer lifespan compared to an otherwise completely healthy 70 year olds. And so we've actually also looked at metformin in our uh, data set. Uh, and we do see a lifespan uh, prolonging effect in the first. 10 years, and then it sort of crosses over, which is probably also the confounding diagnostic effect. But the, the compounds we have chosen have actually a much stronger effect uh, than metformin. So that I think this is uh, also quite encouraging. Yeah, so that, I mean, that yeah, that, I mean, that's really speaks to that. You know, there are several um, compounds like metformin and rapamycin and others that have been celebrated a long time. But I mean, I think part of the power, if I understand, you know, your project, well, right, you've done this kind of an unbiased analysis of many, you know, thousands of drugs, right? So even though rapamycin and metformin were, are kind of, you know, Canada-based, you know, fish, um, you know, there's definitely a potential uh, for, you know, for other molecules that we, we are under the radar to be, to be surfaced using this kind of, you know, yeah. countrywide approach, you know, examining all the people in Denmark. So I think yeah. that's, um, so I think people should take cues from the approaches that you've done here to not, you know, just nominate your favorite thing or your pet hypothesis, but really take an unbiased approach to finding what we think will work best. And um, yeah, so yeah. I think that's an, another thing that's um, we'd like to celebrate about your project. So, um, okay. So, um, so yeah, so like I said, um, this is really just a call just to, um, uh, uh, celebrate the fact that the, the proposal is now on chain, the funds are getting ready to be delivered if the, if the, you know, the voting uh, is affirmative. And definitely would like to just thank everyone in the community for uh, getting Vita Dow in this project to this point. Um, so Paul and Tyler from the Molecule team and this, this various service providers, a variety of um, organizations and, and, and then the working groups um, that are part of Vita Dow have helped 
um, you know, with the governance and a variety of functions which support the research. So um, definitely a big shout out to everyone who's participated. And then, um, of course, we have many new initiatives. You know, this is just the start and provides the blueprint. Um, but, you know, we'd like to go live with several new initiatives and we got several kind of in the pipeline. So definitely encourage everyone to not only vote on this project, but, you know, please get involved in VDAO in general. Um, and, you know, if you're interested in, in, in Morton's project, like, like I just said, I was, you know, get, you know, reach out to him about the types of science that he's doing. And so, um, it, I don't know if Morton, you have anything else to add, but if not, we can kind of just jump in, um, to the AMA if you're, if you'd like to. Yeah, no, I, I also just want to say thank you for this, the journey so far. So greatly appreciative of being here. Cool. All right. So actually all the questions are very science-based, so we can get in, we can spend a few minutes, um, on the science. Uh, sure. and so, um, all right, so let's just start. So, so yeah, so one of the first question, um, uh, was, so that it is mentioned in the proposal, that there's three compounds of interest in, that have been tested in mammalian cell models and in fruit flies. Uh, can you tell us a little more about the protocol for monitoring, uh, uh fruit fly mobility? Um, yeah, uh, we can do that. This is, yeah. uh, this is based on on technology that uh, is uh, actually being spun into a company called Track Bio, okay. which is uh, uh, basically a um, sort of AI driven approach to monitor fly movement and fly behavior. So you get these paths on how the fly moves and how they um, walk around. And this is actually an interesting metric because in um, in all uh, animals and, and also in, in humans. So one of the best uh, predictors of uh, mortality in elderly individuals is actually gait speed. So uh, if gait speed declines, then there is a much greater uh, association with increased mortality in the next uh, five years. And so movement speed is a, is a is a, it's a great measurement of overall health. So we're measuring this um, in using this uh, track bio approach, but we also get age prediction out of this approach and sort of automated um, uh, fly counts over time. And this is, um, so you get sort of granular uh, investigation of, of how the flies are behaving. That's great. Okay, so the next question actually maybe gets into definitely an area that Vita Dao is in general very interested in. Um, it's about the high content imaging. So if you're not familiar in a, a lot of research and in, in Morton's work here, they're gonna be doing you know image analysis where you know lots of uh, uh, pictures of cells will be generated with various markers such as the DNA damage, um, gamma H2, um, 2AX and, and stuff like that. Um, and of course, image analysis and machine learning, there's people, you know, of course at Facebook and other uh, places which have nothing, nothing to do with biology, but you know they've learned how to analyze images. And so, as biologists, we're you know big on generating a lot of images, but we don't always you know have the machine learning um, chops that you know those types of social media companies yeah. have. So, um, so I guess one of the questions was this uh, was is could this data be made available to the VDAO community so that so that you could get some you know uh, external help with the image analysis? I know that that's yeah. I don't know if that's ever been discussed yet. I mean, we haven't discussed it, but I think that could potentially be a good idea. I mean, I have my own sort of AI guys that are, we have a, a sort of semi supercomputer in the group mm -hmm. that crunches um, uh, these images. Um, but I mean, obviously, people at Facebook are much better, uh, and um, so so. Uh, it would be great to get some help for sure. Definitely, that would be fantastic. Yeah. So, um, yes, yeah, so I think that in this case, um, the person who posed that question definitely. I mean, that's one of the benefits of, of academics. You know, definitely, most of us are just uh, an email away, right, from, from contributing. And if you yeah. want to send it through Vita Dow, what you can get in touch that way. Um, so, yeah, but I think definitely an image analysis, is particularly an area where people with data science or more general computational skills can really provide a huge, you know, huge we, as, as mentioned, we, we, we have a large amount of data also on, uh, actually also on, on human aging. Uh, and 
what's interesting is that this data we can actually we have not done that yet but we can actually relate it back to the drug data to some extent um, this was one of the original ideas but it's um, uh, and it, maybe it will happen at some point but but um, but but we have data on humans also where we can correlate with uh, morphological changes in the nucleus for example with age uh, and um, and the the senescence predictors that we've developed are developed on a very large amount of image data so and I'm sure this could be made available we're actually probably going to put the prediction tool online um, so so yeah it would be great yeah yeah so I think it's um yeah so this is more of a general plug for you know uh, biologists were, we, we know all the, you know, all the genes and all this stuff, but I mean, definitely there's the data science is getting to the point where the data is getting big and definitely people who are just purely computational or are, are doing data science in other domains. I mean, definitely biologists are, are we'd love to welcome more people um, into, into the fold. Cause I mean, the other, ultimately sure. the, data, the data is just kind of rows and columns of numbers. So, yeah. you know, a computer doesn't care whether it's, you know, fly movement or you know or, or whatever yeah. so yeah. yeah yeah and i think also i mean just getting other eyes on it and other perspectives yep. are very very beneficial yep. yeah and then, that's the, another thing is biology we tend to be very hypothesis driven and you know want to you know see something in the data but you need you know often you need the computer to get you to the truth so yeah, yeah. so i think it's uh, yeah definitely uh this project will be a, a first opportunity hopefully of many for, for right yeah well, data science. Yeah. So, all right. So, next question. Um, so, let's see. So, just could you describe a little more about the protocol design for the cell-based assays? Uh, yeah, maybe cell types, um, that kind of stuff. You know. Yeah. So we have um, chosen the sort of standard senescence assay uh, for the cell-based assay, which is human dermal fibroblast, primary fibroblast. We have about, I think we're using three different primary fibroblast cell lines. And in context of senescence, we are irradiating them with uh, IR, which induces senescence. This is another sort of classic way. So it's a DNA damage induced senescence. Um, and then we treat with drugs at, I think also a log three. Uh, or a um, log 10, but, but three log 10. So um, I can't remember the exact concentrations, but I'll, I can pick bit back with that. Um, and so we have multiple concentrations and then we run them through a high content microscopy where we have the, um, so ionized radiation wait uh, 10 days, then treat the cells. And then we see if we are alleviating senescence and then we do high content microscopy with uh, some of the markers that you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, as well as the senescence predictor that we developed. Great, and then maybe we can, um, the link is probably the, to the bioarchive paper that you're saying with this kind of DNA only based yeah. uh, senescence. That's, I mean, maybe the link can be put in, in, in the YouTube thread on that too. Just, yeah, um, sure. So, um, a related to then a related question that somebody asked, and maybe this has kind of been obviated by what you said. So beta galactosidase is the classic uh, senescence marker, um, and that's associated with IL-6 secretion and other and other markers such as lambda B1. Um, are you going to do those only in parallel, or you know, are you can to, to continue to validate this kind of DNA only based senescence marker? Or, or yeah, I mean, so we we have validated it as it highly correlates with beta gal staining. We've even also developed uh, predictors based on beta gal staining. You cannot do. Uh, beta gal easily with um, DNA damage markers or other immune uh, cytochemistry because beta gal is a um, it's an enzymatic assay where you basically measure uh, conversion of something that turns uh, blue uh, around the cells. So, yep. so you cannot combine them really in that sense, but you can combine them with uh, DAPI. Um, and so we have done that and trained on that. That seems to work quite well, uh, but they will be separate assays, I'm thinking. Um, we'll have the DNA damage assays in one, but since this is high content microscopy, it's really quite easy to do um, Okay. Do all of these. Yep, sounds great. 
And then, uh, all right, so next question is a little more kind of organizational. So kind of the timeline of the experiments, I think you mentioned 12 months, um, maybe just kind of, yeah, I, I know with research, things always change, but maybe you can give a sense about how you see the fly studies, the cell studies, you know, maybe it's starting to be animal studies, yeah. uh, timeline of all this stuff. Yeah, I think the, the um, I mean, in the original proposal, we were uh, kind of focused on doing cell work first before transitioning into uh, fly work but um, I think to speed things up it's better to do it in parallel really so this is what we've been doing so far which means that we will have more time and then maybe we can uh, spend that time on uh, something that would generate more IP for example uh, optimizing structures of compounds and so forth um, so I think, uh, I imagine that we will have, um, finished, uh, cell work and fly work within the next six months, six, to nine months, maybe. Um, but, uh, this is science. So uh, you, there's always, you know, you're always an optimist and there's always, um, it's always tough, you know. I think most people don't understand that, you know, for every successful experiment, you have like nine failed experiments, right? So, so there's a lot of work uh, that goes into this. But but I really do think we're on a good uh, track here. Um, and I think what's exciting is, of course, also that because this is sort of a community-driven project, I, I think that we should, you know, share the data as we go along and then maybe and let the community decide uh, the direction of it. I think that would be very exciting to do it in that way. Yeah, that'd be cool. I, um, all right, so I think, so the last question is really about machine learning and, and how can we use machine learning better for longevity research and drug discovery? I think we're, you know, part of this project will involve some machine learning. You mentioned this fly, you know, fly monitoring, we have, you know, a camera kind of monitoring. Mm -hmm. Flies and, and converting stuff to image analysis. I mean, mm -hmm. image analysis um, is a way that a lot of drug discovery is going to go. Um, um, and but you also mentioned, um, you know, the this Danish uh, data set. That's you know a different set of rows and columns of, of data from humans. And and um, um, is it is it SNP data? Or is it uh, like a is it genetic data from? Or, or no, is it uh, it's not genetic data. So it's uh, this is you know simply data where um, I mean for the registry data it's you know a date hmm. uh, on when that drug was given to that person and for mm -hmm. what indication. But that person we have as like a social security number, or, um, which is an, an identifier that you use for everything, and so that number. Is also found in the life and death registry, in healthcare registries, and so forth. So uh, I think in the context of AI, you know, the the important part here really is uh, to get uh, the the right kind of data and the unique data, right? Because this is what, and potentially combinations of data, this is what gives us unique answers. If you are looking in it's often if you're looking at conventional data sets, you'll come up with answers that are already known. You'll, you'll find patterns that are already known. So I think combining um, types of data is, is very powerful and then allowing the computer to sort out the patterns. Um, this is definitely, I think, a huge step forward. So, all right, sounds great. So, okay, so I guess that's that's really it. Um, I think um, give it give it. I'll give us a second here to see if any. I'm, I'm getting a feed of questions, uh, but maybe I'll give it just another second. Um, but otherwise, I just like to uh, you know thank uh, Professor uh, Shabby Knudsen and um, of course everyone at University of Copenhagen and 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 Vita Dow and and all the other organizations that made this possible. Um, oh wait, okay, okay. So we got one more question here. Sorry. Um, so okay, so recently there was this. Um, uh, well, there's there's been a big to do around um, protein folding. Um, I think we're not really. Well, actually, this. I think let me let me kind of think this through. So there's um, 
in terms of machine learning and protein folding. So, you know, we got 20,000 human genes, you know, we don't know how all of them fold and why you need to know how they fold is so you could fit drugs in each, each of them. So there are, or, there are um, organizations like Fold at Home and, and now uh, most um, kind of impressive, impressively recently, Google um, uh, DeepMind has, has put forth these algorithms essentially can solve protein uh, structures for, for, for everything, um, you know, just uh, predictions that are, that are seeming to be pretty accurate. And so, yeah, then this could dramatically accelerate uh, drug development. I don't know if, like in this case, um, the questions about distributed computing and, you know, like some kind of probably decentralized computing to solve um, protein structures, I guess I don't have any specific question here. Um, uh, but I, I think, um, I mean, this is a... I mean, I also remember sort of the, um, you know, Back in the day, she had this sort of set high uh, search for extraterrestrial intelligence thing, so where people were looking for radio yeah, yeah, yeah. from the sky yeah. stuff. I mean, yeah. I really like that uh, idea of of uh, of allowing people to give out resources for for uh, for doing these types of analyses because uh, many of them are, are really computational, and very very heavy, very heavy. So right. if, if there's a, a way to to leverage uh, these types of things, and that would be really great. And yep. I mean, the uh, twenty thousand different proteins that we have is is a huge amount to uh, to analyze. And considering that, uh, you know, the drug screening libraries that contain fifty thousand molecules, and then seeing how the fifty thousand molecules interact with the twenty thousand uh, proteins requires uh, more than. Uh, a MacBook uh, Pro, uh, so it would be uh, amazing if we could um, combine resources. I like that idea very much. Um, um, so, so this would be great. I don't know how to do it, but uh, I, I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, sorry, if my I, my connection broke up a second there. Hopefully, hopefully uh, it isn't broken on, on YouTube. But um, so yeah, I think the protein structure. I mean, you mentioned though in your project uh, that you know. You, part of the reason you think some of these drugs may work is because they're not actually targeting the proteins that people think they're targeting. So now that this, um, you know, deep mind solution has come out, you know, that certainly could be a way to, to test your compounds and, and try and fit it in these, you know, now predicted 20,000 different uh, protein structures that, mm -hmm. that deep mind. So yeah, I mean, yeah. where that goes, you know, and, and whether we need distributed you know, uh, now DeepMind essentially, I guess, in, in um, David Baker's group at University of Washington is, has, I think it's called Rosetta Fold. I think right there, they're kind of solving this for us. So whether uh, we we yet still need to do other things, we probably should yeah. look at other things. It but like but I think, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I think that we all, we do need experimental validation and yep. we have, sure. we've done uh, also target identification using uh, different things, genetic screens, for example, we can do here at the university also using the high content microscope. So um, um, I hope that we can also contribute with some of that when we are getting to that point. But first, we need to identify the right compounds, I think, and then and then we'll see. Yeah, but I definitely think, I mean, definitely distributed computing. We, like you said, you've got data sets, um, you're generating some more. Um, I definitely think a big part of the challenge is letting everyone know about what data is out there and, and, and then having more eyes look at it and probably particularly from people who are, don't have necessarily a biology background. I think it'd be really, really helpful um, to take a fresh look at some of the data. So, okay, cool. Um, well, I think that's all the questions. So um, I think we'll, we'll sign off now, but again, just thanks everyone to, for participating. Uh, thanks Morton and uh, we'll be in touch, so. Thank you, Tim, and thank you the rest of you.